This is one that I had earmarked for a while for a follow-up. It's the Google Pixel 4 XL running Android 13 Beta 4, and it's important follow-up for a couple different reasons. Number one is, this is the, the last major update of Android that you're going to be receiving on your Google Pixel 4 and 4 XL. So come October, whenever they release it, that's going to be it. Your service support life ends, no more security patches. They may come out with one more security patch or a special three month patch or something like that if there's some major problems with Android 13. But unlike all the other Android 13 users who are gonna have a full year of patches and security updates and optimizations to work on stuff, Google Pixel 4 owners will not be having that. So I wanna make sure early that the Pixel 4 is running well on Android 13, including the beta, beta 4, because that's close to the final release of Android 13 to make sure that it'll even be worth it to upgrade to Android 13 because 12, they have pretty much locked in. It took them a while. It took them a couple of months to fix face unlock, which we'll talk about in a moment on Android 12, but they've got it running well. It's a decent experience. It's still plenty snappy. There's still lots to like here on this device. So will it even be worth it for you to upgrade to Android 13, knowing you're gonna be out of that support window or just stay in a fully optimized and fully updated version of Android 12. The other reason why this is important is that this is, I got a comment the other day saying, oh, why do you deal with these devices? Why do you mess with it? You can just get a Vivo, a brand new Vivo IQ OO and, and this, the Xiaomi, this and the other. Yeah, okay. Listen, I I'm jealous of the overseas market, the mid-tier and budget markets. I get it. You guys got a million devices that you could choose from. Fantastic. Good for you. I Listen, a little bit of jealousy there, but I, no, I mean that. I wish we had that here. But to supplement that here in the United States, we have to turn to older flagships when we want competition and a more robust market sub $500. We don't have all the Vivos and the Xiaomi's and the whatever else. And even if we could import them, they're only going to work on T-Mobile. They're not going to work to full capacity, a lot of them. Sometimes they're going to have problems with Google Play services. Sometimes they're going to have problems with notifications and updates. RCS, some of them have issues with, with texting. Verizon and AT&T, you're not getting them on there. So forget that. So a lot of times we have to turn to older flagship devices. Older, this is only three years old. $209, link will be in the description. Amazon renewed, fantastic, fantastic deal for that. When you think about the build quality, you think about the camera, beautiful 1440p display. The only complaint I really had about the display, it grew on me, you know, 90 hertz. Doesn't get, it's not the brightest display in the world. But other than that, this thing runs really well. So how is it running? on Android 13. Well, if you remember Android 12, the beta had a bunch of issues, including face unlock. You'd get that horrible message that says, please clear the front of the device, clean the front of the device, including the black bar at the top. And you could scrub that with, with, with Windex or light a bleach, it didn't matter. You had to restart your device in order to get face unlock working again. They solved it in December. Took them a couple months after the full release of Android 12 to get that sorted on the Google Pixel 4. Now, what annoyed me is Android 13 Beta 1, sure enough, had that same error again. I don't know how it came back. I don't know how that's even possible, but it came back and I was annoyed. So I just took my SIM out. I was done with it. Now, on Beta 4, they seem to have it worked out. Especially if you just turn on your device, it's going to work. Face unlock is snappy. I've had no issues with it. The, it certainly didn't get that clean the black bar at the top of the device, which would have sent me, flipped me out. I would, have, I would have removed my SIM immediately from this if it did that. Absolutely. I would not have stood for that at all because that to reintroduce an error that they already fixed just eats my insides. But I didn't have that. The only thing that I did have is that if you have it on for a while, a few days, you'll notice that it'll ask for your pin a little bit more than you might like. Off angle, you got some headsets on, uh, headphones on or something like that. The, the lighting's not perfect. It might ask for your pin a couple more times that you like, but it's night and day compared to beta one on Android 13 and certainly not nearly as bad as it was on first release of Android 12. Radar works on here, so it's great. If you know, when you put it on, all, if you put it, you lock it, always on display comes on, but if you walk out of the room, if it doesn't sense anybody close to you, or close to the phone for a while. It'll actually shut that off to save battery, but it'll use the solely kind of radar thing when it detects you back again. That works well, which I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see face unlock and radar, the things that are solely specific 
things that didn't get carried forward to future pixels so this is a, the solely technology isn't on the pixel 6 right so there's really no incentive for them to work on the technology and make sure it integrates well with android 13 other than the fact that they promised people that they'd support the device so listen good for them they managed to, to port it forward again android 13 and it's running well no issues there. I had a couple of app crashes, but I didn't have any system UI crashes, which was the big bug from Android 12. You'd be going along just using stuff and you get the system UI failure and you'd have to close app and it would just be a mess. Restart your phone. I've had a couple of individual apps like TikTok and Twitter have issues and crash. Not a lot, but on occasion. But the thing is with that, that's okay. That's going to be on the app side. That's going to be on the developer side. This is the final, this is the one that they're going to port out. All the APIs are working, stuff like that. So the integration now is going to start and developers are going to start updating their apps for Android 13 in particular, which is fine. But the UI was the major one that was bugging, uh, bugging me from Android 12. And I wanted to make sure that wasn't a problem with the Android 13 beta. Really no issues. So that's fantastic. It seems to be running well. No issues with Google Apps. A lot of times it was odd when you were using YouTube, it would crash or YouTube studio, which I know is kind of specific to people who do YouTube, but YouTube itself was crashing a lot on Android 12. That hasn't been an issue. Battery life has been good. I've had about the same. It wasn't, this wasn't a battery beast to begin with. Okay. So I'm still getting about that four and a half hours of screen on time, which for this device was about what I was getting on Android 12 and Android 11. So I really don't have any issue with that. Battery drain is particularly good. You could leave this for hours at a time and you'll see only maybe a percentage or two has drained off, which I like. You're not going to have any issues there. I'm going to, the first day that this fires up, I'm going to go ahead and put the full version of Android 13 on here because I want to make, have at least enough information for people to make an intelligent choice as quickly as possible, whether to bother with Android 13 on your Google Pixel 4 XL or just stay on 12. And there's a lot to be said for just staying on 12. They've got 12 locked in. They had the full year to optimize it. They had a full year to iron out the bugs that came with Android 12 on your Pixel 4 XL. So, you know, is it worth it to you for those few extra features that you get with Android 13 to kind of open yourself up, you risk more bugs that could come in and maybe or maybe not get patched? as far as time allows. You know, they're a little bit ahead of schedule, so maybe they release Android 13 in September or late August or something like that ahead of the Pixel 7, but if they release it with the Pixel 7 in October, I, I think you're, you're really, you'd have to want Android 13. I think for the most part, if you're keeping your Pixel 4 XL, if you pick one up, $209, in which I, if you're looking for a phone in that price range, I this is a phenomenal experience for that. Absolutely phenomenal build. Phenomenal experience. You get that pixel experience. You get those pixel, uh, extra pixel features as well as that camera. Smooth 90 hertz display. 1440p display on top of that. Nice OLED panel. So there's lots to like here. There's lots to like here. So that's going to be the decision. So far, so good on Android 13 Beta 4. I'm glad that they cleaned up a lot of the stuff from Beta 1. So we will see if that carries forward to the full release. But if you want to know about that... Go ahead and tussle that subscribe button. If you made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time. And that beautiful panda, too. Can't beat that. Without, and the great thing, bring back the fabric cases. That's the other cool thing you get when you get a 4 or a 4 XL. You get those, those fabric cases with the little accent color of the device. Until next time. Have that Steve Delicious day.